For years, Apple has been trying to brand the iPad as a computer. And since then, it's been hard to see their vision. That is, until Apple added support for an external keyboard and mouse. Suddenly, that vision is a little closer. So let's take a look at your options for an external keyboard and mouse and see how they work and if it's a good fit for you. The simplest way to get started is by picking up a cheap Bluetooth keyboard, say around $15. Then pair it to your iPad by putting the keyboard into pairing mode and selecting it from the list of found Bluetooth devices. Once it says connected next to your keyboard, you are ready to take advantage of a whole slew of features and conveniences that an external keyboard brings. For one thing, the iPad has a pretty small screen. And once that on-screen keyboard pops up, it doesn't leave much room to work with. But with an external keyboard, the on-screen keyboard is replaced with a shortcut menu that hovers over the home bar. What appears on this menu changes based on where you're typing. For instance, if you're in a text editor like Notes, you may get quick type and text formatting options. In other apps, you may only get dictation and quick access to the keyboard settings. Beyond just typing text, you also have access to most of the keyboard shortcuts you're familiar with on macOS. For instance, you can use the same Command Z to undo, Command X to cut, Command C to copy, and Command V to paste. Although, if you're not already familiar with these shortcuts, you can hold down the Command key to see a full list of supported shortcuts for the app you're using. You can take these shortcuts a step further if you find a made-for-iPad keyboard. These keyboards typically have a row of function keys that serve as shortcuts to iPadOS features like playback controls, screen brightness, and dedicated home and multitasking buttons. However, a keyboard is nothing without its mouse counterpart. So once you pair your mouse to your iPad the same way as a keyboard, you will get a little dot floating around the screen. This is a place I think Apple did a great job of bringing a pro feature to the iPad in a uniquely iPad way. You see, the cursor doesn't work exactly as it does on a desktop computer. Instead, it's made to simulate you touching the screen. Notice that as it moves across the screen, it conforms to the buttons a user would touch. Then you can left click to select that button as you typically would. You can also right click, which simulates a long press, giving you access to those hidden long press menus in once again, a uniquely iPad fashion. On the other hand, you can pair a trackpad that uses the same gestures as if you were touching the screen. This means you can swipe across the trackpad with four fingers to slide through multitasking, swipe up with four fingers to close an app, or scroll through a website using two fingers. For a better experience, you can dive into settings to make adjustments for a more personalized user experience. For starters, you can customize a keyboard by going to Settings, General, Keyboard, and Hardware Keyboard. Here you can make changes specific to your external keyboard. Say if you prefer that iPadOS does not auto-capitalize, you can flip that switch. However, the settings will only change for the external keyboard, not the on-screen. You can also make adjustments to your trackpad by going to Settings, General, and Trackpad, where you can change the speed, scrolling direction, and the clicking options. If you prefer to disable gestures, you can go to Settings General Gestures and flip the four and five finger swipe off. Just note that this will also disable the feature if you use these same gestures on screen. The last thing you can customize is your pointer by going to Settings, Accessibility, and Pointer Control. Here you can change the size and color of your pointer, which can make it easier to find on your screen. If you don't like how the pointer snaps to every button you hover over, you can disable pointer animations. And lastly, if you have a fancy mouse with multiple programmable buttons, you can go to the assistive touch setting and link each button on your mouse to an iPadOS feature. Trying a Bluetooth keyboard with a mouse or trackpad is a great way to get started to see if that's what your iPad setup is missing. If it is your missing link, you may want to start looking for an upgrade in the form of a keyboard case rather than carrying around a loose keyboard and mouse. 
Here you have a couple of name brand options. There's Logitech's Combo Touch and Folio Touch, and Apple's Magic Keyboard, which is I went with. Now, yes, Apple's offering is the most expensive, coming in at $300, but at the same time, it offers features and a design that the others didn't. For instance, I was looking for a case that could stand up on its own, like a laptop, which rules out both Logitech options because they both have kickstands. So let's take a look at the case in more detail. In the package comes the keyboard case that features a full-size backlit keyboard, a comfortably sized trackpad, and a USB-C port for pass-through charging of your iPad that magnetically connects to the case. This leaves the USB Type-C port on your iPad available for more important things like plugging in a camera, TVs, or any other adapters. Overall, it's a great option if you're a heavy typer and you always want a keyboard and mouse with you. My only complaint is that it's missing an Apple Pencil cover. I don't feel comfortable carrying around my expensive Apple Pencil out in the open like that where it can easily pop off and be gone forever. But I also don't use the Apple Pencil very often, so it wasn't a requirement. If this feature is important to you, you may want to look into the Folio Touch which also collapses, making it easier to draw on. If you've made it this far, you need to slow down and ask yourself, what are you really looking for? Do you want an iPad because you plan on using it for its touchscreen features and Apple Pencil? Or do you want an iPad so you can just turn it into a MacBook? Because as I said in my prior video, once you get yourself an iPad and a keyboard case, you are likely to have spent more than just getting a MacBook Air to begin with. But if you already have an iPad, a keyboard, and a mouse, you may find yourself being more productive using these tools. At least it's worth a try. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more. Also check out the links in the description where you can find our website, socials, and more. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.